Hey everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Mama Pies Before the Lesson podcast. I'm your host, Carlos Smiley. Now, on last week, as we wrapped the epistle of Colossians, the Apostle Paul gave us a glimpse into how we should conduct, conduct ourselves in public, how we ought to talk, how we ought to walk, but most importantly, how we should continuously communicate with Jesus Christ through prayer. Prayers in the morning because it opens to us the treasures of his mercies and his blessings. Prayers in the evening, because they cover us under his protection and under his safety. Jesus Christ told us how we ought to communicate or pray to him. He says, when you pray, pray privately. You ain't got to repeat yourself because the father already knows our needs. And after this matter, therefore, pray you. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. On Sunday, the title of the lesson is Daniel's Vision of Change. Scriptural basis of our lesson is Daniel, the seventh chapter. So the question that I have, and maybe you do too, is how did we get from there? Way back in 61 AD, Paul advocating for a strong walk and a strong talk in Christ and a continuous prayer life. How do we go from there? to jumping in a time castle capsule back into history even further and into the Old Testament, to a time beginning in 605 BC, when the children of Israel were enslaved in Babylon, paying penance to God for their refusal to repent for their idolatry and disobedience. Yet, even in the midst of their mess, there remained a remnant of the children of Israel that remained true to their God true to their native land. Hopefully, after today's conversation, we'll better understand what our biblical heroes were dealing with, continuing to praise God in a strange land, continuing to give God glory and majesty, defying the king's orders, standing strong through the fire and through the lion's den. How through it all, God kept them. So if you like what you hear, click the button below and subscribe to our channel. Now let's dig into this thing and see can we figure some stuff out. This week, we travel back to the Old Testament into the prophetic book of Daniel. We find that because of their disobedience around the management of the land, their zeal to bring strangers into their sacred places, as well as their insatiable thirst for sin, God allowed the Babylonian king to invade the promised land, not only taking their stuff, but taking them as well back into slavery. The good king Hezekiah, in yielding to his ego and his desire to show off, invited the Babylonians into the palace. Isaiah 20 20 tells it like this. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, hear the word of the Lord. Behold, the time is coming when everything that is in your house and that your fathers have stored up until this day, will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. And some of your sons who will be born to you will be taken away as captives, and they will become eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. What's crazy is that this conversation between King Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah happened 115 years before it actually came to fruition. Wow. In addition, God had instructed through Moses way back in the book of Leviticus to speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when you come into the land which I shall give you, then the land shall have a Sabbath to the Lord. Six years you shall sow your field, and six years you shall prune your vineyard and gather in its crop. But during the seventh year, the land shall have a Sabbath rest, a Sabbath to the Lord. 
You shall not sow your field nor prune your vineyard. The children of Israel had blatantly disobeyed God's law of obeying the Sabbath. They had been promised, they had been in the promised land for roughly 800 years. And for 490 of those years, they didn't observe the requirement to rest on the Sabbath. The Sabbath rest was not only every seventh year, but it was every seventh day as well. The Jews were allowed to work the field for six years, but on the seventh year, They had to let let the land get a rest. God commanded this because the land needed to recuperate, gaining back its minerals. Also, this was an act of trust and obedience to God. The Jews were to trust God's provision by not farming for an entire year. They were in exile for approximately 70 years. As for the 70 years of exile, That number of years would coincide with the number of years of violation of Judah by Judah of God's command that the land should rest every 70 years, seven years. 490 years divided by seven equals 70 years. Among those that were taken away were Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They were the first Jews to be carried into slavery. That's because they were among the best and the brightest that Judah had to offer. Although they were considered slaves in exile, their brilliance, their character and commitment to God never wavered. Daniel's gift of prophecy and interpretation afforded him and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego the opportunity to serve in the king's palace. Their obedience to God and not man eventually got Daniel's three friends thrown into the fiery furnace. But it was the son of God that went in there with him. Daniel, in the third chapter, tells us, Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True. Well, he answered and said, Lo, I see four men, loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. You see, the stands that they took, the consequences that they faced, God not only brought them through the fire, but delivered them from the mouths of lions. Daniel was such a fervent yet disciplined child of God. He prayed always at the same time, in the same manner, in the same position. His fellow administrators were jealous of him and contrived a story to assert that Daniel was in violation of the king's orders. Ultimately, he was thrown into the lion's den. However, again, Daniel tells us in chapter six, my God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me. And also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. We see through a vision of Daniel, God Almighty, the ancient of days, deal with the despaired voices and pretenders that think that this world is theirs. Nebuchadnezzar, reduced to losing his mind and roaming the wilderness as a wild animal for seven years, all because he wanted God's people to bow down to him. Belshazzar, his son, deciding to violate the golden and silver vessels that his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple in Jerusalem, God's house, to drink wine out of, praise false gods, and party with his wives and his concubines. In the midst of the party, then God wrote on the wall. It shook him to the point of needing an interpreter to tell him what the words meant. Daniel told him in chapter five, and this is the writing that was written. Mene, mene, tikel, you farce it. This is the interpretation of the thing. Mene, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tikel, thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. 
then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning him that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. But in that night was Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, slain. Fast forward to today's leadership, those that mistreat, misguide, steal, kill, and destroy God's kingdom, thinking that they can operate above God's law. God is saying, it ain't gonna happen. Psalms 37 tells us, the wicked plot against the just and gnash upon him with his teeth. The Lord shall laugh at him, for he sees that his day is coming. The wicked have drawn out the sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and needy and to slay such as be of upright conversation. Their sword shall enter into their own heart and their bows shall be broken. So on Sunday, we'll see through Daniel's eyes the coming of the Lord God Almighty. He's magnificent in his pageantry. One thing God is unequivocally clear around is that the judgment of any and every person and nation that choose to persecute God's elect, the judgment is coming. God, the ancient of days, from his snow white garments to the hair on his head that is like pure wool, shall have the final say. And when he is done dealing, we shall see the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. Hey, we're looking forward to next week's lesson as we go back in and dig a little deeper here on the Before the Lesson podcast. Remember to subscribe to our Mama Pie's Sunday School Class YouTube channel. And until next time, be blessed.